喜べ少年 That's right. Ahoy, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Talk Fate Grand Order. The we said we were going to do it more frequently, and then we didn't. Edition. I am <laughs> not blessed by the Storm God. You may better know me as Omega. With me, as always, is my Quartzer Master, Lucky. Hey everyone, we're back and better than ever. Yeah, let's hope. Alternatively, I'll need to look up some, you know, royalty-free music to put to some technical difficulties. But anyway, we're here. We're alive.、Uh, stuff happened. Stuff、oh, is stuff happened. Yeah, stuff is ongoing to happen.、Uh, but we'll cover all that and more. As usual, we have a spoilers disclaimer that's actually kind of relevant this week because that's true.、Uh, yeah, a new event just dropped, and so we're gonna we're not gonna do like a deep dive because, well, I mean I'm not done with it. You're not done with it yet, I assume. Nah, I think I've maybe just hit the halfway point. Yeah,、maybe. I'm probably a little a little bit back from you because you got started while you were on a a graveyard shift, in the middle of the night when it when it first dropped. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little behind you, but yeah. So we're not gonna go the full end on Okianos because we're not done with it. But we're gonna talk about some first impressions. And spoiler, spoiler. Obviously, yeah. Okianos is out now. We're gonna talk about it.、Uh, by the way,、Man. if you're、uh, wondering where our good buddy Ron is,、uh, today he has discovered his element, and it was plasma. He already knew his origin. It was pretentiousness. Like、Ron's a very artsy student, and he's learning a whole bunch of trade crafts to get art. And apparently, his current one involves plasma cutting. So, I'm gonna see if he can, like cuts off his arm or something in like a week or two. Well, then he could just get an arm from his future self. Yeah, I totally sell him on that cybernetic arm. All right, but enough on that. So let's get right.、Uh, let's get right into it. Should we just?、Um, well, that, you.、Uh... You came up with the name for this particular segment. <laughs> I noticed when I finally got back into it, so we should probably cover that first. Why don't you go ahead and and pitch it to me? All right. So we have our、um, records from the throw, which is our regular regular achievement topic. But as I said we haven't had anything really like fantastic happen. But on the other hand, as I said, with the hurricane,、um, I said some.、Um, Like <laughs> something bad pretty ha- happened. So what I came up with is not all the world's evil, but damn close. Which is basically our segment when something really shitty happens to us. Yeah. And so, with... uh, <laughs> rip me. <laughs> yeah, rip Omega. Because、um, as I said, he,、um, for those of you who do not know,、um, Omega was hit by the hurricane and he lost power, internet, everything. He was down for like power. Yeah, a week、um, longer after that. Yeah, and so he couldn't log into FGO. So do you know what? <laughs> Rip Omega's daily login streak. Yeah, I had a really good one going. Luckily, I think the the big number isn't consecutive; it's total. But even then, I'm like two weeks behind everybody now. Or yeah, so I think、um, we're on day like ninety six, ninety seven. Yeah, if there was a day ninety bonus, I haven't gotten it yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh,、yes. remember how I said, you know. We'll post more if I don't get obliterated. Well, I didn't get obliterated, but、uh, Hurricane Ir- Irma rolled through, and、uh, guess what? My county was the second hardest hit county in all of Florida. Really?、Uh, yes. N- something like ninety-five percent, maybe ninety-six percent of the county was without power. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was rough. It was a real rough time here.、Uh, no structural damage, no like water damage or anything. You know, my house is fine. Uh, some of our trees aren't fine, but in that respect, we were pretty lucky. There are some people in the neighborhood who like got、uh, like screens demolished, stuff like that. Some roof damage.、Uh, there's a house down the block where the winds punched through one end of their attic and out the other end. <laughs> What? Yeah, it, it was it was bad,、oh, but that's terrifying. I'm pretty okay. You know, everything survived.、Uh, it's just we were without power for a week, which involved a lot of generators and a lot of hugging fans. And then internet didn't come back for another week and a half, something like that. I I totaled it back. I was 17 days without internet.、Uh, after power came back on, we were able to get some、uh, off and on like、uh, cell phone hotspot activity, but that wasn't good enough to play. 
but yeah, so that happened. Uh, and, and nobody, you know, I, I joked about, you know, the whole uh, disaster donation spiel uh, last time. D- don't don't really do that. Don't feel bad for me. Like, it was just, it was, it was rough, but it could have been much worse. There are places uh, that are much worse off right now. But that's not really about FGO, for the most part. No. Now let's go go into um, the meat of it, our skelegrams, because in the past three weeks, a lot has happened. Yeah, like, this, uh, this I'm gonna is start why the... we uh, decided to go to weekly. Yeah, well, we're gonna start things off with over thing over things over there in the ran- land of the rising sun here, and Japan just had their 10 million downloads event. Like yeah. 10 million, just imagine that. It's like we here just finished up with our 1 million. Yeah, and I, they're like, uh, as far as I understand, one uh, that, uh, 10 million is actually a milestone for mobile games in Japan, as it is. Like in the U.S., that's that's a, a lot, a lot. But even yeah. for Japan, it's a pretty big number. Um, but as I said, this was actually a pretty. It was actually kind of a big update. Um, it, it's it, it's already over. It only ran through um the. Tw- uh, the 20th to the 27th and they had a whole bunch of nifty goodies like that half AP for uh, quest half QP for enhancement times two for great success and super success but they also increased their service servant and craft essence storage from 300 to 350 and in, and um, increased their second archive expansion from 20 upgrades to 30 upgrades the maximum uh, limit was increased up to from 200 to 250 the second archive isn't something like I'm pretty sure not a lot of people here in the U.S. are using right now because, as I said, we still got plenty of space for servants, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought about archiving a couple servants that I wasn't going to use just to keep them out of the way, but then I learned that interludes give quartz, so it was like, well, shit, I've got to level everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The second archive probably isn't going to come into play until you actually we, we've hit, like, max bond and, like, max level with servants, and it's like, I am done with you forever. Yeah, and then I have just all go the into, things you can give, stuff. and guess what? I don't like you that much. Or there's, I have way too many new uh, servants to get. Yeah. But as I said, um, this 10 million download isn't over. Um, da Vinci's Workshop got an update at the time, too. Got a couple of uh, CEs to put in there to buy. Um, like, well, with like um, all things, they got a... Uh, if you get so many retweets... You get quartz. Guess what? 100k retweets got J- Japanese players 30 quartz. Guess what? They achieved that. Yeah. Uh, with 10 million downloads, just 100k, yeah. retweet, just 100k in social media presence in Japan, easy peasy. Hell, you can that run is... that here. Uh, by the way, I hope that does mean that eventually uh, Aniplex NA upgrades to 30 quartz for events. I know that's something that they do uh, regularly in Japan, like when they do streams. Uh, they joke about... Um, one of the, funnily enough, one of the major development guys is actually named Nobu. Uh, he has a, <laughs> I think, I think that's right. I'll probably get slaughtered if it's not, but whatever. Um, and they are, um, he might be the one who does that, but they joke about the rule breaker, because it used to be, and we see this now, you regularly get like 10 quarts, 10 quarts. Well, in Japan a lot, they talk about the rule breaker comes out, everybody gets 30 quarts for a new event or a, or, or a major release. <laughs> so that'll be good when we when we upgrade to oh yeah uh, and the event gives you a ten pull. Yeah, I am so hoping for that. Um, let's see here. Speaking of quartz, um, another thing they did during the ten million thing is they did a comeback event for players who went inactive or haven't played since April first. They could basically log in and get a whole bunch of extra goodies, like extra quartz, some tickets. I think some golden apples were in there. Um, but so an incentive um, to get during, you to come back and play more. Yeah, I said. Uh, also, regular playing, regular playing players also got like a stash of goodies as well. It's just the comeback event was on top of that. Uh, let's see here. He also did a week long raid up, um, featuring uh, Merlin, um, Artoria, and Artoria Lance, uh, Artoria Saber, and Artoria Lancer, as well as their altars. Yeah, so that's, and that's here's the regular he- Saber and, and the regular Lancer. But also, before you get to the really big thing, we should point out, Merlin's a limited servant, and he is, mechanically-wise, one of the best support servants in the game. He's got a great kit, especially for servants that do buster damage, like buster NPs, like, hmm, Artoria, G. So, <laughs> the fact that he's a limited and he got a run with this, that's also very important. But yeah, even so- more important, because this game's not about... Uh, doing high damage and being really cool and good. 
<laughs> it's about waifus. Yeah. Right. And the last thing that they happened with the uh, 10 million is everyone got the commemorative ticket that gives one free SR servant. And the list was huge. Yeah, I'm actually going to um, like. It right I noticed right away that uh, Gorgon and um, Artoria Alter, Lan the Artoria Lancer Alter was in there. Yeah, that, that's some big ones. Uh, let me see. Let me look at the list. Because uh, I, 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 I joke that it's a veritable who's who of do you not yet have this waifu? I want to say eight. Was it eight? Anyway. But uh, um, the list see, so... over in Japan is like. 30, I want to say. 20 to 30. You big. get your choice of one four-star from, from 42 available using the special 42. ticket. 42. Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, by the way, a lot of these are some of the rarer uh, classes, too. Like, there's a lot of sabers, uh, including uh, Artoria Alter, Sumanai, Nero, Lancelot uh, Saber, who will come up later. Uh, in Archers, you've got Atalanta, Emia, Emia Alter, Tristan. Lancers, you know, Liz is in there. Uh, the Lancer version of Medusa. Uh, Arturia Alter, Lancer, like we mentioned. Some others. Uh, for Ryder, Astolfo's in there. St. Martha, Mary Antoinette. Uh, and Bonnie and Mary Reed, who are relevant in NA right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Caster is pretty good. You can get Gilgamesh Caster. Uh, Nursery Rhyme, Nidacris, uh, Midia Lily, Assassins is is pretty good. You got a good collection there. Uh, and then Berserkers, including, by the way, this includes some newer servants too that are SR. Uh, Friends also in there though. In the uh, Zerker slot, and then there are there are actually four star Avengers. Oddly enough, I think the only f current four star ruler is a Summer Servant, so those aren't on this list. But, uh, yeah, Gorgon's on there. Yes. So, yeah, uh, in two years, when we have whatever our equivalent is, because I don't know if we'll hit 10 million downloads in, in two years, but uh, about this time, they'll probably do something similar. Hell, I mean, if we don't hit 10 million downloads, they could wait until November and say, Thanksgiving. Holy shit, take your pick. Oh, yeah. Because they said they wanted to do stuff like that, and that would be about the right timing. I suppose. Uh, so, yeah, these are a lot of earlier servants, but also some more more later ones if you have a lot. And it's basically, it's like insurance. Did you really want one of these? Like, I could totally see myself if, if I don't have Fran or, God forbid, I don't have Nero, though that'll be really hard to do because Nero gets a lot of raid ups. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if you, if, you, if you don't have maybe uh, Artoria, either of the Artoria Alters or something like that, you can go like, oh, sure, I'll get him now. So that's a you great little thing. Your collection did. now. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and then there's a couple of other JP events. Let's just burn through these really quick. They had a 900k followers commemoration. Is that that's for their official? Yeah, their official Twitter. Uh, by the way, that means that if you're listening to this right now and you don't follow the US official Twitter, do it because they do stuff for that. Duh. Mm -hmm. It's a mobile game. They want interactivity with your mobile stuff. Uh, and then uh, Kuma F. 2017 exhibit which is not something i know what or where that is but it's a thing they're doing uh some... i just had better my mic yeah careful without that but that's okay whatever um so they're doing a rate up of several servants headliners are limited servants okita and hijitaka and you wanted me to play the clip so i will okita san daisho that's right, great victory for Okita. I'm yes. okay with this because uh, I like gold sabers and I want to roll Okita someday. Yep. Players also got uh, 10 quarts for logging in during the event. So, yeah. you know, everyone's going to hopefully get what they want. Uh, and uh... I, I said this is going to be one of the easiest uh, events ever to port over. Wait until you find the appropriate uh, Japan-centric convention that you're going to, like an anime expo or whatever. Just boom, drop <gasps> it. No, 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 no. It has to be Sakura Khan. Ooh, yes. That's good. That's good. Okita's associated with uh, cherry blossoms and stuff. I know, and, exactly. Uh, here's something they've just announced. This is actually upcoming. Hasn't happened yet, but is upcoming. Uh, to tie into the stage play, which is a stage adaptation of 
uh, the Camelot story chapter still upcoming in NA. Uh, they're having an FGO the stage banner, which I think, if I read the Japanese site correctly, is from the 30th to the 8th. Uh, a rate up on several Knights of the Rounds, including we aforementioned, uh, you know, Tristan and Saber Lancelot, also Ozymandias and Da Vinci, who is a limited servant. Uh, Ozymandias and Da Vinci are both SSRs. There's a commander of CE. And the third SSR is why I like this event and hope that it comes to the U.S. in some form. Uh, it's because Mordor is in it. Mordecai! Yeah. He needs a Saber of Red. Yeah. Who doesn't need a but Saber of Red? Red Sabers are the best. All right, but that wraps it up for things hoping, happening over in Japan, so let's bring it well, back stateside. There is one thing to mention, kind of, because oh. uh, this isn't on our list, but because it's not a huge deal, but right now Japan is doing a rerun of the 2016 Halloween event. That's oh, right now. not super important. Yeah, it's a little early, but I think that's because they're also planning on launching their third Epic of Remnant chapter, their next uh, interim oh, story okay. this month. So they're, they're probably uh, trying to rush it a little so they mm -hmm. can have the Halloween event at the actual time. Uh, but this does actually matter to NA because that means that if you should uh, be sure to log in and play the Halloween event this year, and then they're going to rerun it next year, but the third year, they're not rerunning it, it looks like. Not rerunning the original one. Oh. Uh, at least at this time. So that's, that's actually relevant for us. Uh, at this time, there's only two chances to get into that version of the Halloween event. Uh, I'm glad I'm stockpiling. All right. All right. Uh, so let's, yes, let's actually. Um, a lot of this will be in the past. So yeah, mm -hmm. let's let's uh let's go ahead and cover. All right. So uh, last week we had the uh, Fuki base raid up with uh, half AP on quests. As I said, it was pretty simple. It was just something they had in their back pocket. It's simple. It's basically just a two-step marketing move to keep momentum and FGO going until Kiana's dropped. It basically kept a wide gap from an appearing in a light, um, event lineup, so people would lose, um, not lose as much attention. And it also incentivized uh, newer players to push through the singularities and get to the current end game. I use air quotes for that. Yeah, because obviously um, it's not the actual end game. But yeah, you have yeah. to clear the previous story chapters to access the new content, so they want you to do the new content. And in this case, there's quite a bit of buildup between prologue and two story chapters, so you have to make sure you're you're actually clear of that. Later events won't necessarily go that far back. Uh, yeah. Also, the Fuyuki rate-up is basically the original FSN rate-up. Everybody who's three-star or better and was in the original Fate Stay Night story got a rate-up in that gotcha, including Artorio. Uh, but obviously, if, the dates for that was the 14th to the 21st, so I was indisposed through most of that. Oddly enough, I <laughs> threw a summon ticket I had at it and got Heaven's Feel, which is a five-star CE, which was interesting. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so hey, next, I don't know when this sign. started, um, but next there was the Septim raid up, which and there was half AP on, I think it was just story quests in Septim, not free quests. Sorry, yeah, I rushed yeah, it was a like, little. Uh, I think it was uh, story quests. I'm not sure. It, well, it was definitely a story. I don't know if it was also free. But basically, I, this ended the 28th, which was basically it ended when maintenance started for Okinus. <laughs> yeah. um, but this is important because it it sets a trend that we're going to see every time there's a story-type event. Um, I don't know for sure if there's a gacha for all of them, but I think there is. Uh, but definitely you will see half AP on story quests in the previous chapter before the next chapter drops because they want to make sure you've cleared it so you can access the new content right away. Um, and of course, I, uh, the rule of wife wisdom at work, uh, I see Nero and Altera, I roll, and I got fucking nothing. Of course. I said, I've been holding off rolling since the, uh, 1 million download event, because I said, I'm waiting for Halloween, because I have a mighty need for a blue caster. Yeah, see, that's... I say, yeah, at my total right now, I'm at, like, 95 quarts and 6 tickets, so I'm hoping to hit, like, 120. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe I'm almost back up to 30 between, like the tie-ins to this event, and then, oh my god, there's uh, quests that actually drop quartz again. I know, so it's like, it's, it's like, if you guys are a bit patient, you can have, uh, you can build quite a lot. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm also, um, statistically speaking, I'm overdue for a four-star now. I haven't gotten a four-star servant in quite a while. Uh, but I guess that, that sometimes bounces out because there's been rules where I've gotten multiples in a single pull. <laughs> 
All right, uh, now we're going to get to what everyone is hoping for, is that we're going to talk about Okeanos. Right? The new um, story chapter. What's the full subtitle of the chapter, actually? Uh, I'm actually going to have to open up the game for that. Uh, third singular. And I'm in the middle of the, I'm in the middle of a battle. I can't. Yeah, don't, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to Google it. While you're doing that, I'm going to punch some dragons. Yeah, you do that. I need to go back to that. Ah, oh, dang it. I don't know why you're all... Uh, everything's Japanese-themed. I can't see the actual name. Let me go to the website. Quick, vamp while I type. Not that it matters because people can hear me type very loudly and that'll that'll keep them involved that's not foley that's my <laughs> microphone picking up the typing sound <laughs> all right here we go third singularity sealed ends of the four seas okeanos starts ah that's what it is set in 1573 humanity foundation value a yeah it's important mm -hmm. you know that means that the last one's going to be like EX or S plus plus or something dumb like that. <laughs> yeah, but um, so Okeanos was um announced on September nineteenth, which is I find personally hilarious because it was made on International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Ah, that's all I had. I'm fond of International. The Talk announcement Day. was made by Edward Teach, who is better known as Blackbeard, and apparently. He has been given the power of internet access because his uh, speech pattern and uh, habits slash hobbies raises a few eyebrows. Oh, yeah, also I kind of hilarious. When I get time, I'm, I'm definitely going to take him out for a spin and see what he has to say for himself. Oh, yeah, no. I already, I already got a black beard early, and I've, I've ascended him a couple times. I like that guy. He's funny. <laughs> he amuses me deeply. Yeah, but... um. As it came with a promotion as well, basically getting 10k likes or 5k shares on Facebook with net players 10 courts. As I said, in about 24 hours, the post accumulated 15k likes and almost 4.5k uh, shares. Yeah, um, I was going to say, we did... spoilers, it worked, because I already got that 10 courts. <laughs> yep. Uh... Alright, but as I said, so we are basically um, like two days into Okeanos. Yeah. And as I said, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have been burning through it. People, um, as I said, I have, um, we've been getting a lot of golden fruit. I wouldn't be surprised if some people have already finished it by now. Yeah, probably. Uh, or some um, people who are whales might drop quartz on it, too, to get yeah. back. I'm playing conservative with my AP. I want uh, apples for events, not for story stuff. Yeah, same here. I said, like, once I said, once I hit Halloween, everything's going back down to zero again. And I'll probably start saving for Christmas. And then, see, you'll be um, you'll be that guy and uh, who's dumped all your stuff, and I'll be the one saying, no, I'm holding for November. Because <laughs> I have the sneaking <laughs> suspicion that they're, that we're going to be right, and there's going to be Skahawk in November and possibly uh, Gura Gura Honoji. I'm really hoping for I'm really hoping for that. Otherwise, uh, December's gonna be bad because that's gonna be Skahawk with a trial quest and a limited gotcha, a short window like a week or ten days for the Christmas event, and then oh. the London chapter. Which oh, is I think be actually, bad for me. <laughs> I think I actually missed this, but um, um, Aniplex is having a panel down at um, Anime Week in Atlanta. They actually have two panels going on, one Friday, one Saturday. One is oh. just the general Aniplex um, panel, but uh, the second one is specifically the Fate Grand Order localization panel. So I'm hoping we can get some um, news out of that in the next couple days, and maybe we can get a little bit more info about what's going on with like Gouda Gouda and um, other such events. Yeah, that's actually lower down in the show notes. You put that lower. Uh, you also said you're hoping for U.S. movie dates for Heaven's Feel. Would you be? Ah, uh, yes. I Heaven's said, Feel um, cool. yeah, it would be. Uh, actually, speaking of the order of operations mm. here, should we cover with the the ongoing read up first, and then get into our kind of our first impressions? Do you think? First crack at it. I um, we act we had extended maintenance. It was it went for about two and a half hours, I believe it was. Yeah, it went extra long. 
yeah but we got we got uh what was it six gems and three apples out of it i believe so yeah, you know, know we, that just we went straight those, into yeah. my bank yeah, hmm? sometimes it's hard I, I sometimes i lose track of when we actually get things i think we got that I, we did actually get that already but sometimes yeah. it's hard to tell uh, as i was saying uh do you want to cover the the actual ongoing rate up for okeanos right now and then we get into our initial impressions yeah let's go into our initial rate up because i have a little bit of a story that uh like kind of freaked me out so while um omega was uh indisposed of it fell onto me to you know do all the research and type things out and so i was basically typing out the um the information about the Oke okeanos um announcement and during that time you know back september 19th i could have swore up and down that they said they're gonna have a rate up at the same time so I typed that down. So I went to go find who was in the rate up, because I because I remembered yeah it's gonna be Francis Drake, uh, the pirate gals, a few others, and I couldn't find the information. Just all vanished, and it literally caused me to freak out for like a week. Cause I'm like, where did I see this information go? And Turns well, out yeah. that they had just deleted it and then re-rolled it into the actual announcement of Okeanos. Um and and i'm just apparently just got a quick sneak peek but yeah, they probably the, uh, posted a separate because technically it's a separate event like it's a rate mm -hmm. up because it'll end uh obviously i i already knew there was going to be a rate up involved because obviously japan had one so yeah. i was relaxed about it but is that there was um... also a point where i was like oh Lucky didn't finish writing out who all the servants are on raid up. I gotta go double check that. Maybe I'll fill it out. And then I was like, "Wait, where did I see who was in the raid up?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's in the bottom of the news post now." Yeah. Um, all right, so but the Okinawa uh, raid up. Yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The Okinawa raid up is lasting until the twentieth of twelfth of October. Of course, it fan it features um, five star Francis Drake, our first uh, five star writer. Yep. Um. Four star writer uh, Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed. Uh, three star Uriel, Hector, and David. Yeah, uh, and, you can't hmm? you can't tell because we spoke it, but uh, Hector is spelled with with the card K, uh, which is not how normally people transcribe Hector of Troy. Uh, so I was like, are they are they going to spell it Hector for reals? Shouldn't Herc then be Heracles, also with the hard K? Hang on. I copied it straight from them, so yeah, yeah, it is. That's a little weird. I wonder if they got some executive direction on that, <laughs> or if they just decided that the, the K was more accurate. Oh, and there are know, a bunch of the... new CEs. Yep. Um, let's see. I think it's four. Yeah, four. Mm -hmm. And we got a new. Uh, we got two SSRs, two five stars. We got Victor of the Moon and another ending, which actually um, features the main character from the extra series. Mm -hmm. Hakuna. On them, the male and female version of them. Yeah, each gets their own CE. Uh, also, see, got Codecast a new... is a reference to extra. Yeah, Codecast is also, but that has a picture of Ren on it, who was also in uh, extra, I believe. Mm -hmm. what is it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a a version of Rin and Extra. Yeah, and the final one is rare called Anchors Away, which is you know definitely relevant to Okeanos. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Okay, <laughs> showing that we are way behind Japan. We had our 100k followers commemoration took place on September 22nd. Everyone got 10 quarts. Only 800,000 more followers to go. All right, so let's All talk right. about the actual Okeanos story chapter. Uh, our, just our first, our initial impressions, because we've only played, you know, a handful of them. And a lot of these quests are actually really long. They got a lot of segments per name. And it costs a lot of AP. Mm, like, I yeah. don't think I've seen one under, like, I think they're all, like, between, like, 12 and 16 so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far. Uh, my initial impressions are very good. It's a very strong chapter. Ah, uh, yeah, it's definitely hitting those adventure feels. It's like you you definitely you definitely you're definitely going around you're basically sitting around with a bunch of pirates going quests and you're like slowly uncovering this big quest for treasure and it's like so yeah it's like ah uh, it's got a the very, characters are good yeah classic adventuring game vibe like if you were just going to play an RPG you know back in the day 
you can play a pirate RPG and be like, oh, we're going to sail some islands. Oh, there's a minotaur on this island, you know, stuff like that. It's it's very solid framing in that regard, mm -hmm. uh, which is an improvement, I think, over Septim. Septim had some problems with its framing where it was like, okay, we all like Nero, and the story continues to tell us how much we like Nero, but really <laughs> this, the enemy characters and the enemy actions don't really go anywhere. It's just, grr, grr, you fight. We only designed one set of enemies for this uh, for this quest map, so you fight them a lot. Yeah, that's that's another great thing about uh, Okeanos is the enemy types are varied. So, like, depending on where you go, it's like you might be fighting werewolves, you might be fighting ghosts, you might be fighting Lamia, you might be fighting Chimera, pirates, pirate zombies. You might be fighting it's... some fucking wyverns. <laughs> Give me yeah, it's teeth. like it's it's it's, it's great. Um, it's like you, you honestly get a sense of what's gonna happen what's gonna happen around the corner. By the way, Lamias and, and I think, like uh, centaurs are also gonna be in this later. I don't know if you've actually run into them yet. I know I haven't, but I haven't. Uh, no. Lamias and I think it's the centaurs are important because they drop snake gems and meteor horseshoes. Yeah, I said uh, those are like we haven't had access to those yet, so having the uh, ability to farm them now. Super important. Technically, I think we did have access to snake gems. It was just it was one free quest, and it was an abysmal drop rate. Was it? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Like I said, it was it was there was like one thing to do, and it was like you have like a point eight or point zero eight percent chance of a drop. So it's a shitload of AP. Uh, thank God for a Nero quest, anyway. But yeah, so I'm liking it a lot so far. You know, uh, you're obviously liking it a lot so far. The servant characters are great. The opportunities, uh, poor, poor Mash, poor Kohai, playing the screen <laughs> woman as always. <laughs> I seriously love, like, as I said, um, I love Mash's inability to stop pirates from drinking and sinking. For like the first like few parts of uh, the um, adventure, when Mash is trying to get things wrangled, it's like she just ke keeps getting blocked by pirates wanting to drink and sink, and it like frustrates her to no end. Mm-hmm. Also, Mash doesn't like to be called Sir, apparently. All right, so minor spoiler: when like the first map you do, you literally take over a pirate ship, and you, well, basically... you race shift in on the center of a pirate ship. <laughs> well, there was that was yeah, a so concern. You fight them. <laughs> but that brings me to one of my one of my one of my favorite early moments: Da Vinci Chan's greatest invention, the rubber floaty. Because your Mash <laughs> is like, wait, what if we race shift to the middle of the ocean? And Vinci's like, no, I got this. Flotation device. Hey, back in the Renaissance, it would have been a great invention. I honestly, I haven't looked through Da Vinci's notebook lately. Da Vinci might have done that. <laughs> Leonardo Da Vinci invented a tank design for crying out loud. That's true. But so basically, um, the that pirate ship starts following Mash's orders, and like I'm just hit with like, why isn't there like a pirate queen Mash? I think that'd be amazing. I think that'd be great art. She could even be a servant. She could be a saber. At least make her like a CE with just like a big long coat. I think that'd be great. We need more alternate like... costumes for Mash. Have you seen her werewolf costume? Oh yeah, a dangerous beast. We're gonna be <laughs> yeah. seeing it. I'm pretty sure that's that's Halloween. So. I don't know if it's this Halloween, but it's definitely a costume change she has seasonally for a Halloween. <laughs> um, and again, the back of the blade jokes continues. Mm -hmm. Because I, don't kill anybody. Honestly, I... <laughs> They're supposed to be here. Not that it matters because Mash doesn't have a blade. She just smacks people with Lord Chelius. I know, but I just like that it has appeared in every singularity, and I hope it continues. It probably will. At this point, <laughs> if it's not in the original Japanese, it's a, it's a direction the translation team is taking. By the way, we joked about uh, you know the drinking earlier. Uh, you, the master, also get smashed. Oh, yep. it's, it's such a great sequence. Mash is trying to tell you important things, and then she's like, "Senpai, how many fingers am I holding up?" And then you're like, "And the response well, is, well, I see two of you." So and literally, Mash's visual novel sprite is doubled. There's literally two of her on screen, and you're like, well, there's two of you, so... I don't know. Oh, what's even great is, like, before that, you start, like, doing toast and cheering and yelling. You are literally, like, just one of the pirates at that point. Of course. That's how come you, you get along so well with the servants. You just get along great with everybody. Yep. Yeah, actually. 
And of All course, right. your uh, uh, your major ally for the section, as we discussed when we previewed it, I think it was last episode, uh, is yeah. Francis Drake, the lovely lady pirate, who's great. That's that, but of course, with all servants, before you can actually, you know, join forces with them, you you have to defeat them. Well, so course. you fight Drake. Yeah, Drake's and... a famous pirate. She doesn't take shit from nobody. Nope. And of course, like you beat her, and she does that that typical thing. It's like you can do whatever you want when she fry me, boil me. But then she added a third one, which caught me completely off guard, which was you can fry me, boil, me, sleep with me, and I was all like, you have my attention. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, you the... and literally everybody else playing the English version of this game. <laughs> and it's like so. I was uh, and then you get you basically get to make some uh choices like I'm good or I can't remember what the other one was, but I was seriously upset that I couldn't respond with I'm gonna plunder that booty. Uh, and I have seen quite a number of image edits of that dialogue. <laughs> Oh man, that's like just, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, like okay. I'm really dig. I'm, I was feeling I was gonna dig Francis Drake beforehand, but like seeing her character. Yeah, she's great. Then traits. That's like I'm really starting to fall for her, and I am definitely gonna be adding her on my list of waifus to one day Can't have. Roll for her during her raid up. Oh God, I'm so tempted, but I've already spent money. I I want to stay a dolphin. I don't want to go whale. Yeah, no, it's fine. Just, yeah, hold your money to yourself. Yeah, just... But, we're talking about... If we're going to talk about, like, other characters that, like... I'm going to talk um, other characters that we're in. Like, surprisingly... Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce this, Rose. Is it Asterios? Yeah. A Asterios. Is there Asteros? Hmm? No, it... it uh, as far as I know, in Greek, you put emphasis on every syllable. So it would be Asterios. Asterios. I'm going to go yeah. with that. Asterios, um, Asterios, who's, you know, everyone knows as Minotaur. He shows up here, and me, personally, I thought he was gonna be, like, an enemy kind of character. No, this guy is, like, the broest of bro. This guy, this, this guy, he's only a one-star berserker, you know, so, he, like, most people just kind of, like, toss him off. He's like, uh, is, like, it's, like, I'm, like, dude, bro, like, give me a hug. Just give me a soft, like, don't crush my bones, please. Yeah, he's like three meters um, tall, so be careful. Yeah. In all things, you like you 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 battle him. Then he joins your crew with um. I'm not gonna I'm gonna butcher this if Urale. I say this. Uriel, Uriel. No, it's Urale. And have you never, uh, it's like have you this never guy literally. Is... She says her name. It's uh, pronounced Urale. I'm, I'm trying By the way, to like you're uh, breaking up a little for, on my end, so uh, don't oh, be man. alarmed, you or listeners, if I either of us sounds like we're repeating ourselves. Nature of the beast. All right. Yeah. Uriel is getting massive side eye though, especially uh, when she references her loser sister. Yeah. No. Uh, first of all, the elder two Gorgon sisters should be maximum side eye at all times. Keep your eyes on them. Or you're going to get got. <laughs> they are not to be trusted. Also, I, this isn't in the show notes, but, like, I always kind of try to imagine what my master character is doing through all this. You know, stuff like, uh, I imagine because I put, uh, in that particular fight after you get drunk and you sound maybe like you're a little hungover, I put Mash in my back row. So I'm imagining that Master is just lying on, you know, using Mash as a lap pillow with Lord Chalice as, like, a sunshade. While Emiya obliterates waves of pirates. <laughs> and I like to imagine that, you know, Medusa is lurking off screen at all times, just ready to do a flying jump kick at Loser Sister. Uh, because my Medusa is actually higher level than Urella is leveled in the story. Oh, I got, I got. Let's, um, my front row is, uh, is, let's see, Talamog. Then I got John. Then I usually keep. Uh, Drake, there, my guest. Then I got Waver. I actually been using in my final slot is um my backpack slots is a uh, Mash. My fifth slot I've been using to farm bond points for characters. So right now when there's Robin Hood, mm. uh, I because there's a lot of sabers, I let Emia do some work. Then I'm like, oh wait, I have a Golden Archer who is much lower leveled. So I've been letting my own personal Atalante uh get some time in, do some work. 
Oh, that's gonna be great. Um, I just got to the part in the story where Atlantis shows up, and she meets Orion and Artemis, and it was great. Um, oh, by the way, uh, we mentioned it before, but uh, Artemis slash Orion is back, and oh boy, I just I just got to them in the story when I had to quit because I read an AP, and mm, it's it's, it's good. great. Uh, it's Artemis is still terrifying, unlike, but it's good. Yeah. Orion's an actual character Well, it's good now. because, yeah, he's actually speaking and stuff, so you actually get to see their character dynamic, and it's hilarious. It's like, I would definitely uh, call, uh, Artemis is, uh, I wouldn't call right. she say she's full Yandere, but, you know, uh, she's, she's a she's goddess, <laughs> and Orion is her darling, but he is, as a Greek male hero, he is not necessarily the most chaste and honorable of heroes. <laughs> No, it's great. And I said, the problem is fairly compounded that he's just a small, kind of ugly stuffed animal. Mm -hmm. So he, there's a lot of uh, physical abuse going uh, towards him right now. Yeah. And he also has that nice uh, cliche of bad stuff just going to happen to him just because. Um, fun fact, I he caught um, one of Atalante's arrows with his head. Of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know for sure. That, but it I'm... sounded kind of like when when Orion was our guest that actual true Orion's voice. He sounds kind of like it's the same VA as Lancer. So if that's the case, his lack of luck does not surprise me. <laughs> uh, all right, and this is a I, and um, I said I'm a little bit further in the story than um than uh omega so i've like gotten through the first wave of bad guys who was basically a uh, blackbeard and his crew it's also where um Anne and mary show up along mm -hmm. with uh hector and um eric blood x who was there's one more already in the i game. can't yeah i'm trying to think read they had one more person in their crew uh, oh eric blood, eric blood x yeah that's where it was he's there, already was. he's already in the game and i've actually used him a little to get his interlude he's a, he's all right he kind of yells a lot He's a very yelly guy. He's a berserker, so that's kind of be expected. That then the real enemy shows up, and you get to see, spoiler, Medea Lily, and I'm just like, this girl is too pure. And uh, well, actually, I mean, it, she is like, if the story of Medea is a tragedy on multiple levels, like and you guys no, would have no, a sad day. Uh, go and here's, some here's the pisser. Some Here Greek, is the uh, pisser. Place. Here and this is the pisser, the super pisser. She's traveling with Jason. Yeah. So, it's literally, it's because it's literally, you literally, the Argonauts, like, the crew of the Argonauts is showing up. So, you got Jason, you have Medea, you have Atalante, you have Hector, and you have, did I say Hercules? No, you didn't mention Herc. Hercules. They're all like, this is like, this is now the next uh, level of bad guys that I'm on right now. I'm trying to deal with that yeah, shit. Yeah, the fucking Argo well, shows up, does it? Atalante's on your side, though. She's like, fuck this shit. Fuck Jason. Get out of here. I'm done. No. Wait, do, do they actually show up with the Argo? Yeah, yeah. That's that's. Remember in fate that in g the general rule is if something is older and well established, it's stronger. Uh, so the fucking Argo and the Argonauts. That's that's bad. Yeah, that's real yeah, fucking bad. Um, I said one and oh god, I was gonna mention something. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the the title that um. It's the world's oldest and strongest pirates. And you're just like, shit. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, after listening to Jason talk and seeing his personality, it was like, when it comes to, um, like, young blonde men with overinflated senses of importance, I definitely prefer Gilgamesh to Jason. It was like, Gilgamesh, I look, and I'm like, oh, you, you and your mongrels. I look at Jason, I'm like, I just want to set you on fire. Wait, hold on. I got a button for that somewhere. Or it did have a button. Zashu! Yeah, there it is. I found it. Gilgamesh yelled at us. That's okay. He does that. He does that. But, like... As I'm looking at Jason, and, like, no one is saying good things about them. Like, they try to, and then they're like, no, wait, no, he's just fucking useless. Jason's... And I'm like, oh, my God. Historical Jason's kind of an asshole. Yeah. He's also not actually, he's not in the game for real, I don't think. I don't think he has servant I'm, code. I'm good. I'm fine with that. Like, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to ever roll him. And I said, so you got Jason, you got Medea Lily, who, um, for, for, um, 
for for the timeline, this is the Medea before Jason betrayed her. Yeah, before the like, events of the many classical plays and legends of Medea where uh, she uh, stabs Jason's kids, who are also her kids, and also his new bride, and then rides away on a chariot of the sun. Or mm-hmm. other things. There's a couple different versions of the myth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So she's all nice and stuff. Kind of. Kind of. I'm like, there's some, ins- there's some, uh, there's some hinting that, like, um, dear Lily, there's more to her than meets the eye, but she's definitely playing the part. Yeah. Well, let's, and what we gets should, me we is when we talk about huh? Medea, we should mention Medea was trained in magic by Hecate, the goddess of night and magic and stuff. And she's descended from the sun god, Helios, like, by a couple generations. And in one version of her legend, Jesus. the the giant titan Talos, uh, she killed him with her eyes. Like, she just looked at him and he exploded. So, like, and this was pre-going evil. Like, Medea's, Medea's got some stuff going on. I said, uh, I, said, I, um, well I, I saw her, her, um, it's like, I was, a uh, you get, you battled her a couple times and I was actually, like, kind of scared what her noble phantasm was going to be. You know what it's called? It's called Pain Breaker. I'm like, her, you're too pure. It, it basically heals you and, um... I think it removes uh, some buffs. I mean, it removes the buffs. I can't remember exactly. Oh, but so I'm it's like, reverse it, rule breaker. Yeah, it's reverse rule breaker. And does it also like, charge your like, MP? Flying... What was that? I asked. Does it also recharge her NP? I'm actually not sure. Uh, I was uh, I was too focused on trying not to die because, oh man, some of these battles they are they are getting rough. I have been knocked down to mash several times it's kind of scary a lot of the bosses you fight over like 150 k hp yeah like, that's Jesus. why we grossly over leveled that's why i have level 60 something guys i actually get to uh, take saber lily out for uh, for some fun there were some lancers some wear jaguars like Smack i have been uh there's a reason why i'm keeping my john even though she's only uh, like level 60 something in that front line, because oh boy, tank. That, she she is the tankiest, as seen recently on Apocrypha. Oh yeah, an accurate representation of what Luminous Eternal does. Oh. Um, and if he's said, charging up his big bomb, better uh, better block that up. <laughs> and literally saves the city in the as a as a side note. But more importantly, she tanked for her. She uh, tanked for her entire team. Yeah. Um. Um. But I want to roll back to where I'm about at. Uh, Blackbeard. I already loved him when I when I drew him and, and got used to some of his dialogue. But oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, who uh, gave him so the skeezy. internet? There's no way he, his personality could have been like that unless he got he got to sit down. Uh, I think and do some major heroes. web. <laughs> or it was it. me. It was my fault. I already summoned him. He's in Chaldea. <laughs> he's he's fucking talking to Magical Mari. <laughs> That's actually true. Cause um, have you like throughout the chapter, you, um, servants that you have seen before, like um, Atlante, and uh, I think one more. Well, actually, references like, oh yeah, we met before. But yeah, because and... Atlante was in uh, Orleans, actually. Yeah, she was a uh, she was a shadow servant. She was uh, I think. Also, she's in my she pocket uh... somewhere. Yeah. That'd be really awkward. Is there a fight with Adelante? I, I haven't got one. All right, I that's said, too bad. I think I want to uh, make my Adelante fight the actual Adelante and see how funny that is. <laughs> um. Uh, but, as yeah, if, as Black, I said, um... Blackbeard's great. Everybody hates him, not unlike Jason, but in a completely different way because he's he's creepifying. He's uh he's in a he's a major like shut in type otaku. Uh, and obviously a bit of a lolicon. <laughs> yeah, and definitely has some of those uh, more more uh, frowned upon fetishes. He's also clearly a masochist. <laughs> but he, he creeps he cost- the fuck out of every female servant he runs into. Like, you run into him on when he's standing on his boat yelling at you. First of all, he calls Drake an old hag. Oh, which is just... Like, constantly, yeah. just, like, that's... Never calls her Drake, just constantly calls her old hag. Which just paralyzes her said, with anger for a good, like, five minutes. And then when she starts speaking again, she's just like, fire. What was that, Captain? 
Fire everything. Fire everything. <laughs> if you don't start shooting, I will load you into the cannon and fire you. <laughs> um, like, and it's just not Drake. Like, all the, all, like, MASH <laughs> is just, like, MASH takes, like, mental damage. Uriel taking major mental damage because Uriel is the one that Blackbeard's after. Right, because she's eternally childlike as an immortal goddess. That's not the only reason. You actually find out that there's more to Black Bear than meets the eye. Yeah, there's there's some special but... effects of uh, Queen Anne's Revenge. Mm-hmm. By the way, there's a lot of pirate ships in this, and they're pretty cool. Uh, I've used... Uh, well, guess what? Because Drake, as an SSR writer, has a great fucking kit. She has Golden Rule as her second skill for NP gain, yeah. and then she has Voyager of the Stars, which Blackbeard also has, but... She starts with it, and it's that's NP strength up and attack up for your team. So it's great. Like she's got mm -hmm. a great kit. Mechanically wise, I'm interested. I'd love to roll her sometime and, and see see what she can do. But uh, her noble phantasm is the golden hind that involves shooting lots of. I'm gonna assume mana powered laser beams and stuff. They're 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 ship lasers. Like literally, ship comes out. Than giant space cannons, like they—they mm -hmm. they don't look like they ever belong on a ship, and they fire multiple times. It's crazy. Yeah, I love. Uh, it. And if you haven't ever played with Blackbeard, his is similar, uh, but it's actual cannonballs. Uh, yeah, it's just the Queen Anne's Revenge just broadsides the fuck out of the enemy. Yeah, so I don't—I don't even know. Maybe it's because like your ship breaks down and you replace it with dragon. It's true. And since that historically happens, that probably means that's integrated into the legend of the Golden Hind now. It's <laughs> dragon plated. <laughs> I have to see what. Um... Uh, speaking of Francis Drake, uh, I'm gonna segue here to a little moment here. Um, Francis Drake was basically like around like I think it was a hundred years before Blackbeard, and basically roamed around like England and the um, Med and the Atlantic, where the spice trade was like really big, especially pepper. At one point. Da Vinci, all she does is she just sends over a pepper shaker and says, shows that, show that to drink and drink fates. Just <laughs> hits the ground. Yeah, because so... <laughs> Oh my god. Drake, she's Drake's also Drake. like like a standard pirate, like super afraid of ghosts, to the point that when she sees one, she actually shrieks like a little girl, and everyone's just like, what was that? And Drake's like, nothing! Boku. Boku. She also has her own Holy Grail, which she keeps in her boobs, because that yeah. is the only place for it. Yeah, that was... The design team know what they're doing. When You you see the mysterious Holy Grail sheen, and it's right in the cleavage, which is a generous area. Uh, oh, no, Drake she actually mis mentions that. She well, actually yeah, it that. sinks into her body, but yeah, no, like, it's... The, the, the effect is right there. And uh, Drake's missing a few... She, uh, she forgot a few buttons. Oh, yeah. I don't think she forgot a few buttons. I don't think the buttons can contain it. Uh, but here's something that I thought was kind of kind of interesting. I joked about her saying Boku earlier. I, I was kind of surprised because I'd never heard her speak before. Uh, that Drake has more of what you'd say like a like a boyish voice. Like, you know, you know, if you've watched anime, you know the kind of voice. Like, you know, kind of a little harsh, uh, a little grating. Um, not really masculine not necessarily deep but got a got a certain like i said boyish quality to it i was kind of surprised i was thinking she'd be more of like a mature like ara ara type but oh I, I can see you know she's, she's a big uh, she's spunky big adventurous instead. yeah she is. she's a big adventurous tomboyish pirate mm -hmm. I, I i think it fits actually kind of perfectly no yeah she, it works she knows she's she, like, surprised at first she's her, like she she she's design. one of the boys all right as like uh, which is obvious by like <laughs> We're going to set sail, but tonight we're going to party and drink. And yeah, just drink solution to everything is, well, let's drink some rum. Oh, we need to wait. Drink. Yeah, literally, that is it. It's, it's, it's great because... It's drink or smell treasure, which Mash doubts her ability. <laughs> oh, my God, that actually kind of made me sad because... Um... if she wins you have to go travel around the world with her and i'm i'm just like yeah i'll do that and you're just like but well, what about the memories of like oh, fine i'm like no ah shit right time oh, space has got to fix itself we're here to fix time oh man but yeah like interesting thing the drake uh her wits on the grail was to make sure that everyone has food water and shelter 
Ooh, and so basically time. her grail just makes an endless amount of food and rum. It also one of her wishes is that things could be hurt by bullets because she has a couple of pistols, so <laughs> she can actually fight like servants and stuff. Because let's she's she doesn't have a fake grail that has been distributed to fuck up time. No. Historically, the game says Francis Drake went to Atlantis, beat the shit out of something Check Poseidon's ass. Poseidon, yeah, and <laughs> took a holy grail and just lugs it around and that's how history is supposed to go and it's also one of the reasons why this this era hasn't collapsed completely yeah it's because, it's because basically the two the two wishes of the holy grails are fighting each other which makes like a weird like closed circle you can't leave this zone of ocean or whatever the story is like it's, it's fantastical it's amazing yeah. yeah it's great the but writing is that... great the translation is pretty top other than you know we noted some things like Hector with a K uh, but I haven't noticed any weird translation errors. Some classic memes have come back. Uh, there's obviously going to be many, many new jokes. <laughs> but I think that wraps it up for our initial impressions of Okeanos. Yeah, uh, we'll how come we come back on in time? maybe a week. Um, the recording time has just hit 55 minutes. So yeah. we, oh, yeah. we, as I kind of figured we might, we probably, I mean, we gushed for Okeanos for a while. So we should probably wrap up. Uh, I do want to mention, you actually, I don't know if we actually said this, we said last time you were going to do the research, but you have actually done the research, if we move to Chaldea Free Talk, about what the 100-day celebration was in Japan and thus should be for us, and that's coming up soon. If if we're on day, like, 96 or whatever, that'll be in uh, less, excuse me, less than a week. Yeah, as I said, they usually don't do announcements for, like, events like this for, like, like two to three days beforehand. So if we go another couple of days without hearing about it, they're probably not going to do it. As I said, I don't know why they wouldn't do it. It's some, just something simple and easy. But with Okeanos going on right now, they may not want to overshadow it. Try to, uh, like, but at the same time, it's only away. just, yeah, it's just a streak. I mean, they've they've done uh, back-to-back stuff like this before or or within itself. So it's um, it's a week, right? And then you uh, you get some stuff out of it. Uh, so quartz points, couple summon tickets, that'll be good. Some fruits, uh, some foe cards. And then specifically, if you log in on the first day, you'd get 10 four-star experience cards. Which I know I want because I've got Hungry Sean. Yeah, I do too. It's like I, haven't got, I haven't got her up to 90, but I'm, I'm only like like four monuments away from being able to advance her and then I just need like three no one more berserker monument because fun fact because I I farm uh try to get berserkers monuments so much I have plenty of archer uh, archer I'm not archer um caster assassin and writer monuments so of course because you never get there. the fucking monument you want <laughs> nope <laughs> all right. uh all right yeah so that puts us at almost an hour we'll have to leave our more fluffy type topics you know Comparative wifeology, uh, and some of our, you know, uh, we need to still do more of our background research for CE and servant spotlights. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we've we've got plans for that. Don't worry. I mean, we've cleared out a whole month's worth of news. What more could they drop once in a week? Also, please, hopefully, please we'll actually that. come back in a week. I think we will. Uh, and then we might be in time to pregame for our the actual Halloween event. Yeah. Uh, Though I do want to uh, talk about this because I've got some some stuff to roll in. So uh, I, last time we talked about our our dragon mom effect, you know, the more mom and the more dragon, the more we want. I uh, yep. I thought that we should put that on a T-shirt. That <laughs> should be our first merch. I need somebody to figure out like the how that graph works, and just yeah, like the line is want, and then the one axis is uh, is uh, more mom, and one axis is more dragon, and just the line goes up. And up and up, and that 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 could be our first official uh, merchandising. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, and we do have um... one dot of master feedback. Uh, a thought to leave us on. This is actually kind of coming back to an old topic, um, but nobody really commented on it. So we want to just we want to do just a quick double check. And this is mostly for me because I do the I do the editing on the actual episode. I double check the audio. I composite the video as far as it goes and all that. So uh, I've talked about using artwork before in the backdrop. So um, I kind of want to ask people who are listening, 
you know, and or watching. Uh, usually I just do one static image and then I insert stuff if it's appropriate. You know, like we've mentioned screen slides from certain things before, so I've thrown those images up. Or I've thrown photos I've taken up. Uh, so, you know, I'll ask you again, um, viewers out there, do you want something more visually interesting? Do you want, you know, something that'll catch your eye, maybe, or keep your attention, or just, you know, prevent your computer from going to sleep for a while? Uh, which would probably be in the form of, like, slideshow type stuff. Um, which I originally talked about doing with fan art, and obviously there's some concerns there because, you know, you want to make sure people are credited. So I wanted to ask, uh, I have art in my collection, even though, you know, uh, like if you download off Twitter or, or Imgur or stuff like that, you usually just get a, a random file name. I have some, or I have plenty, actually, I should say, artworks which are signed. Uh, very clearly, you know, the author's signature is on the artwork piece. How do you guys feel about me using credit artwork if I assemble like a rotating like every 15 or every 30 seconds we flip to a, a, a new fan art image out of the collection I've gathered for such purposes and you know and I make sure to include the signature of the artist do you guys want that sort of thing are you interested in that do you not care you know let us know let us actually know your feelings because uh, that's something you guys can actually help influence for us All right. So and with that, have, let's, yeah. uh, let's close it out. Yeah, we have just cleanly hit an hour. Uh, so per the use, you know, if you like this video, you know, like it. If you want to see more and you haven't already, subscribe. Obviously, we've asked for feedback directly, so please comment. Uh, and this is actually Im is important now. Um, so YouTube recently did a thing. They say that videos were accidentally monetized or or sh falsely showing is still monetized or whatever because they did a thing where they talked about how they were going to end ad support for uh channels even if they were partnered that are under 10,000 lifetime views i'm an actual youtube partner i've been in the guts of these videos and stuff that's that's not that's not how the code actually played out they can say it was that but basically they forgot to they did not turn off monetization or demonetize videos until just now so uh, the channel is at just under 2,000 views total, so we're about a fifth of the way there, so please, uh, you know, watch the video, share it with everybody you know, find out more, get it out there. We can hit that 10,000 views, and that's actually kind of important, not just because it would allow advertising monetization, you know, that because that's okay, but also uh, YouTube is partitioning a lot of their in-video links. Hopefully people have noticed that I've started putting end slates on our videos. But um, you can, if you're a fully credited partner, you can link to something like a Patreon, like a store if you offer merch in the end slate. You can still do it in the description, but unless we hit that 10,000 video mark, I can't do that directly in the video anymore, which is, you know, if you're, like, watching something full screen on mobile, you know, it's, it's harder to get at. So that's actually really important to us, so please remember that. All right, well, I got nothing else to add on, on my end. As I said, um, as I said, Omega is the one who's in the beat and the guts of this. I'm just here to, you know, to bring the good time. Don't worry, we'll we'll rebrand the channel sometime, and I'll I'll give more people logins. So maybe, but that would require us to have content to post when I'm, you know, dead without internet somewhere, <laughs> which would require a whole level of education. So we're not there yet. We'll work on it. Um, yeah. So. All right, so everyone, everyone have a good night, and we will see you next week. Same FGO time, same FGO channel. But not BB channel yet. <laughs>